Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our Healthy Hustle today. This is Kevin Larson, Vice President here at New Earth. And we're going to get right to it because I have a special guest. You can see her already on screen. We have Amy Chadwick back to share some information with us. And we have you back, Amy, on a, something that really applies to kind of your daily life, right? Absolutely. Um, February is heart month. Yay. And you spend a time or two around hearts and people's hearts. Uh, that's not to say that she's dating anybody particularly or that she is working <laughs> no. at a candy company that makes hearts. No, she's, we're talking about actual human hearts. So Amy, tell us a little bit about uh, what you do. Well, Kevin, on a day-to-day -day basis, you're correct. I'm around a lot of hearts, meaning heart patients. Um, my long and drawn out title is a heart nurse heart failure, which I hate saying failure because no one wants to fail. So I like saying dysfunction, but it is a heart failure nurse navigator. And most of the time that means it, I'm educating patients on things they can do to help themselves to stay healthy and out of the hospital. And that is my day-to-day -day job. Um, I, I really enjoy it. It actually encompasses a lot of my background in health coaching and personal training. Um, a lot of it is motivational interviewing and helping people realize like, hey, you have power to actually make a difference in your own life. And being able to give that to a person um, and listen to where they are, meet them, their needs, where they are, is um, one of the things that gets me out of bed every morning. And it, it makes me feel like I'm doing better in this world um, to be able to help somebody realize that about themselves and take control. How cool is that? It's, I love that when it comes to, you know, healthcare, that your title is suddenly, you know, intervention, right? Mm -hmm. Heart failure intervention. Whereas prior to someone going to the hospital or having to be seen in some sort of a medical setting like that, mm -hmm. it would be, you know, just heart healthy lifestyle or heart, heart healthy living, right? You make a good point there. Is it it's, it's a matter of choice and when you make that choice and mm -hmm. you're going to make it eventually if you keep making the wrong choice. You're going to meet Amy and Amy's going to say, yep. <laughs> well, let's talk about things you can do that maybe you could have done. So I'm excited about our conversation today. Yeah, that's kind of, you know, what you're saying, right? Is that you, there's things you can do now. You don't have to wait. <laughs> yes. You don't have to wait until you're in the hospital feeling like you can't breathe and are 20 pounds up from your norm because unfortunately your heart pump is failing and uh, yeah, you don't want to be there. It's not a fun place. Yeah, powerful, powerful. So <laughs> let's talk a little bit about that. Um, you see, as you mentioned, quite a few people and you give them some you know, tips on what they can do to intervene in their situations. So for someone that hasn't had to pay a visit, um, <laughs> yes, what let's kinda, talk about that. That's, that's more fun. <laughs> what are some tips uh, for a healthier heart? Well, we can get down to the basics, um, honestly, because they work. And this job has, as, as much as I've done health coaching, um, being kind of on the other side for the intervention, like you were saying, has open my eyes more than anything to the fact those small things that we talk about diet exercise sleep and stress those lead if you're not doing them correctly to big things like heart failure heart attack uh, coronary artery disease and it's it's true it's not just something you read in the book it, it's not something you watch on tv like it actually happens. Somebody could have high cholesterol and that could be the only thing that they have and it leads to a heart attack. It really happens. So how do we intervene or how do we actually, sorry, intervene is not the right word, the prevention part of it and the empowerment 
is the most important thing somebody can do. And it doesn't matter how old you are. It absolutely doesn't matter if you've never done exercise before. Those small things equal huge gains for your lifestyle and honestly, your quality of life. So if we talk about exercise, what does that look like? Exercise, do something you love. Don't run if you hate running or your knees give out. Do yoga, do swimming, have a great time in jazzercise. I mean, Peloton. Oh, sorry. I'm not sure if I'm not. You're allowed. That's brand fine. Names. You're good. But, you know, find your favorite YouTube videos, find your favorite, um, you know, health guru, guru on Instagram or online or wherever you're looking, find something that gets you excited and motivated to take the next step to get out of bed in the morning or before you go to bed at night and do five, 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes of activity. You don't even have to title it exercise. It just needs to be movement and activity. So that's easy for exercise. If you want to say it like that or movement, so move, enjoy it, do something that brings a smile to your face and list a buddy when you do it. That's also another um, tip to help you get moving is an enlisting another workout buddy. I love that. Um, I actually listened to a podcast today. And one of the things, mm -hmm. the story that he told that was, I thought profound, uh, mm -hmm. a, this gentleman wanted to lose weight and had failed every other time. And he, he had to for these same health issues, right? Mm -hmm. Heart health issues. So for I think it was about six days in a row. He went to the gym, but he only went for five minutes. Yeah. And the whole point of it was he had to change his belief systems and show himself that he could show up. Yeah. Okay, check. Six days down, I got the showing up part <laughs> done. Right? That's, it's, it's so great. That is the hardest thing about it is showing up. So the fact, and, and I do this with my clients and my friends, who are, ha are struggling with it, just like, just do five minutes. Like, that's it. Just try it. And guess what? If you like it, you don't have to do another five. You can, but you could save the other five or the other 10 minutes for a different part of your day. Yeah. I love it. Small chunks add up. And it, it is, it, you don't have to do an hour at a time to count it as activity and your heart will be happy with 15 to 20 minutes a day. That's it. I love it that you were going to, you were about to mention some other, you know, maybe tips that people could consider top of mind. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one of the easiest and most difficult is stop smoking. <laughs> smoking mm -hmm. is one of the biggest things that is like a control, like you can take away the cigarette and give your heart back and your vessels back elasticity and a way to actually get the blood through the vessels without it being so difficult for it to move, which increases blood pressure, pulse rate, work on the heart, quitting smoking. If you can figure it out and there's so many free, um, kind of like 1-800 quit now, like free sites. I mean, the government's behind it. They have free coaches that can help you with it. Um, if you can quit smoking, you're doing your heart like oogles, <laughs> oogles a benefit for later on. So that's another quick tip. The other one is control your blood sugar. People don't realize actually how much high blood sugar can lead to heart disease. So you can obviously do that through, you know, increase of fiber in your diet, decreasing the amount of processed foods and carbohydrates, those types of things, actually testing yourself for blood sugar and seeing what that is in the morning or doing an A1C, which is how they measure it every six months to see where you are in as far as a diabetes prevention. But that sugar can absolutely do damage to the blood vessels themselves. And as of 2020, actually was an independent risk factor, meaning if you have diabetes, you are at a much higher risk of getting heart failure. So that's it. If you have diabetes, your risk of heart failure exponentially grows. Wow. You know, and mm -hmm. 
you mentioned food um, mm-hmm. as a as an appropriate step forward, right? There's there's a lot of interesting things that have fallen out of the American diet just because you know our food comes in boxes that we then slide into a microwave and yeah you know then sit down and watch whatever you know Netflix marathon we happen to be on like a really all bad things for the heart <laughs> right <laughs> and uh we talked about to just a couple of days ago on the healthy hustle um you know beans and legumes mm-hmm. and things like that as well as appropriate uh, beta glucans and things like that through fibers, um, like oats and wheat and things like this, right? Mm-hmm. That, that's real. Talk, talk a little bit about that. Um, you know, how powerful can, you know, the simple choices you make, like which type of cereal you have for breakfast or, you know, something like that really can make. Sure. Um, when you look at, first and foremost, read your labels. Um, you, a lot of the time people don't actually know what they're eating. I have heart patients say, oh, well, I'm not eating that much salt. You know, I don't salt my food. And then I say, okay, let's, let's pull out that can of soup. (laughs) Let's turn it over and let's read. Oh my gosh, it has. 2000 milligrams of salt, which is your entire day worth of salt. And they had no idea. It's, it's, no it's idea. almost not fair. Because yeah, I, basically, right? Yeah. They think, well, <laughs> soup is healthy, right? Yeah. Used so the first thing is, is, is actually know what you're putting in your body. Rule of thumb, if it grows in the ground, if it comes from a tree, if it's a seed, a nuts, a protein that is, you know, been walking and grazing. Uh, or a chicken that has laid an egg. So those really don't have a lot of labels. Um, You know, they're a a whole food. If it is a whole food, it is good for you. You know, obviously, yes, red meat in moderation, I get it. Um, But, you know, you don't have to eliminate it. Maybe you just don't eat it five days a week. You eat it a couple days a week and at smaller portions. Yeah, we watch uh, on occasion. I have been known. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll admit it wasn't by accident that I have <laughs> watched some cooking shows, things like that. And it's interesting how, you know, even here in 2022, mm-hmm. All of these people that prepare these meals, they say that it's based on a protein. What a a remarkable misunderstanding of what a protein really can be and where it has to come from, right? That it doesn't always have to be from an animal, right? There doesn't have to be an animal on your plate every time you eat. And I I think that's something that's maybe lost in... The, mm-hmm. the dictionary that is American eating. Absolutely. I mean, if we're shooting for fiber, because fiber is the gold standard for helping uh, reduce blood sugar, you know, impact on the body as well as cholesterol impact on the body. I mean, if, if you do eat a bunch of meat, um, you're not getting that fiber. If you eat beans, guess what? You're getting fiber plus a protein. If you eat a carrot, if you eat lettuce, guess what? Those still have protein in them, but they also have fiber and minerals. So eating a more plant-based diet is, you know, beneficial in not just, you know, protein, but actually giving you vitamins, minerals, fiber to reduce blood sugar, cholesterol, and antioxidants. And again, as we know, with heart, with the heart is that we want to decrease oxidative stress, which causes aging of cells, which causes some inflammation, which causes things like heart disease. Wow. So, yeah. so prepackaged foods uh, by nature are great. Prepackaged foods in boxes, not so great. <laughs> Right. That's um, a great way of thinking. Well, because car- carrots are prepackaged. It it's prepackaged. <laughs> it's prepackaged. You don't even have to put it in the magic microwave. You can just bite it. That's it right. comes out of the ground. It's good for you. <laughs> That's a great analogy. I'm so stealing that for my you, heart patients. You can have it. You can have it. <laughs> um, 
Okay, so there's a last one. And I think <laughs> at this particular point in time uh, in our society, yeah, this one is powerful. Stress management. 100%. What people don't understand, or maybe they do kind of understand, is the impact of stress in the heart. And um, what stress does in some good ways is actually give us energy to fight or flee or, um, you know, kind of rear up to do something about the uh, person, place, or thing that is coming at you. (laughs) Bears. Bears are a great example of when stress is useful. (laughs) Exactly. And the thing, you know, sadly, uh, nowadays is actually work projects or a breakup or my friends have COVID or, you know, something to that extent. So those kinds of stressors over time, the hormones that are released like epinephrine and cortisol, um, and there are some cytokines and interleukins and all these kinds of inflammatory factors, those over time, if your body is not using the energy that is released with those, um, that equals some bad stuff within your vessels and bad stuff within actually the heart pumping function itself. There is actually a condition called broken heart syndrome um, or toxobocardiomyopathy, if you want the full definition, where the heart actually remodels to be kind of stretched out and it really doesn't pump that well. It's just kind of down here trying to get some energy to move the fluid wow. inside. Wow. And that literally can be induced by a massively stressful event. So stress is a real thing. It wreaks havoc in your body when you're not using that stress to actually like run or fight um, over time. You can channel it into other things. Like if you are feeling it, like maybe take a walk, maybe do three push-ups, maybe, you know, do some squats, do something to move that energy. And if you can't move it, do some meditation do some breathing, get the opposite hormones coming in to calm that stress response so that it is not present for days on end, weeks on end. So that's the whole thing. If you can't move that energy and use, you know, it actually does release glucose from the liver when you're stressed out because your body says, I need energy to move. If you can't use it with movement, then try and bring in the opposite hormones to calm down the response. And, and, and how do, how do folks access those? Like you were mentioning meditation mm-hmm. and things meditation like- is really great. Probably Honestly, sleep. the easiest thing to do is do a four count breathing exercise. So in whole, you know, in for four, hold for four out for four, hold for four, or they call it the box breathing. Do that for two minutes and you can actually feel your body kind of sink in, you know, kind of mellow out. If you add music to it, it helps it even more. Um, If you don't have time for that, if you have a funny video on your phone, laughter can actually smack down those hormones as well. So, you know, I mean, Instagram and YouTube sometimes are really great for things such as that. Find something funny, call a friend. Um, You know, those are the things that you can actually calm those hormones down if you can't move and and help your body out with the excess energy. That's actually really fascinating because there's a lot of people in stress right now and Mm -hmm. a lot of it probably has to do with you know, the isolation that's been taking place, the over politicization of everything that is place taking place, right? Um, You know, maybe loss of friendships, etc. So yeah, that that makes sense. Take the time to Mm -hmm. maybe step away from 
the brightly lit screen. Um, I do. The, it's it, it, OK. I'll give you a confession, Amy. I don't let my girls use their phones late at night, mm -hmm. but I do. <laughs> and it's probably uh, you, you would warn me, right? Hey, there, there's got to be a time when you stop scrolling, put it down and move away from it, right? Well, how's your sleep, Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a, that, that would be my next question if I was doing health coaching with you. So how's your sleep? You know, it's because it does affect it. Yeah, it makes <laughs> sense. It makes sense. There has to be a time, you know, there's a there's a meme on the Internet. Right? Go touch grass. Right. Don't get so worked oh. up about things. Go out, yeah. be outside, touch <laughs> some grass and, uh, you know, hug a tree actually do hug the tree and just you know move on with your life and find some peace because it's not the real world oxytocin. so you're right actually you brought up another thing you're right if you have somebody or something like a pet to hug that's another huge release of serotonin and oxytocin uh which will combat stress hormones <laughs> but if you don't have a person or a pet i wonder if hugging a tree would actually release oxytocin uh, it does for me <laughs> 100%. Ah, that's that's a confession. That's a very strange <laughs> confession, but yes, I do hug trees. I love it. It's living. It is living. And I also have a Jack Russell, which is <laughs> she is loaded with uh, oxytocin to share for everyone. Oh, that's great. That's great. Stress management. That's a, those are great tips. So diet, uh, movement, and stress management. Um, sort of no just smoking get <laughs> no back smoking. to a better you know sort of more humble uh you know centered lifestyle right it's mm -hmm. it's kind of crazy because you know 70s and 80s they would say well yeah just kind of live your life right mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah things got a little a little bit more complicated i'm not sure how exactly i mean there's many many different factors but yeah, I, I think we have to be more cognizant now than ever because of the influx of stimulus and not all that stimulus is positive stimulus. Right. Breathe so deep. we're Stop unaware smoking. of let huh? it go. Breathe deep, stop smoking yeah. and let it go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, basically go take a walk and breathe yeah. and let it go. <laughs> without yeah. your cigarette please <laughs> yeah and a carrot replace the cigarette with a carrot that's and right carrot. actually <laughs> I love it. so if somebody listening right now yeah. is in a position where maybe they're thinking to themselves okay fun and games aside i i need to do those things mm -hmm. what's your recommendation we addressed it a little bit earlier. So start small. So if it's one category or two categories, just choose one thing to commit to. Just try it. Just like that guy showed up at the gym six days in a row. Even if he just walked around the gym, the fact that he showed up six days in a row means that he is starting to form kind of new neural pathways and he feels accomplished hence more motivation to do it again yeah he's a gym goer can't say yeah. he isn't you can't exactly so that's ultimately how I, I talk to anybody about a new habit start small start i mean if you want to the nitty-gritty or smart goals um i i just i like to go with even more you know of a simple action start small, start with something you think you can actually obtain, and then reward yourself with a positive comments or, you know, brag your friends, something just to give you that extra motivation for a little while. And then it will be self-efficacy. The fact that I believe I can do it myself, that will carry through. And that's ultimately how you start a new habit. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. A new habit that'll uh, help you, you know, accomplish important things, a new heart. And mm -hmm. with a new heart, yes. you, can, you can do a lot for a lot of people. Yes. 
give your heart a tune up honestly yeah, yeah. everybody and could give their heart a little bit of a tune up it is an extremely important muscle you have <laughs> there are people you want to meet in certain places and at certain times you want to meet amy chadwick you just don't want to meet her at work <laughs> You want to meet her for dinner or for lunch or, you know, an occasion, but, but definitely not while she's at the office practicing because you have an appointment. So that is correct. thank you, Amy, <laughs> for the sage advice. And to all of you that are listening today, uh, thank you for listening. Share this with someone that could use it. Share this with someone that needs to maybe intervene before they have to be intervened upon mm -hmm. and make a difference in the lives of other people. And with that, thank you for joining the Healthy Hustle, Amy. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. It's, it's great to talk about my day to day in a more entertaining way. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thanks, Kevin.